I mean, we have half an hour. Let's start. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's start. All right. Thank you. And welcome to the oddest panel seating I've ever experienced. And look, our fourth panelist running up to the stage. Perfect. Perfect timing. Because if we're not standing up, the cameras can't see us. All right. You know what? Let's make this a standing panel. I was not prepared for this, but let's stand up. It's half an hour. <laughs> Welcome to this. I will wander around and be visible. Excellent. Bridging the gap. Trying to figure out how we can best work together in the movement and specifically we'll scratch the surface of what keeps us from doing so. My name is Johan Jansson. I'm a Swedish Wikipedian, also working for the Foundation, where I handle part of the communication around product development. And this is the panel. Sam, who is a product manager, moderator tools. Runa, director for language and content growth. Sakti, who is the regional manager around Southeast Asia here, and Julia, who is a communication relations specialist working with fundraising. All these people work around the community in some way for the Wikimedia Foundation. If we had a lot of time and had a big conversation, it would make no sense to have just Foundation folks talk about this. But we have 30 minutes, so we are going to scratch the surface a little bit and hopefully bring some clarity to a few of the things which makes this difficult. So very, very briefly, what are the issues we're facing when we're talking about the communities and the foundation having this gap and not always understanding each other? Sam, you have the microphone. The microphone, I'll start. Um, so I wanted to talk about this a little from the sort of product perspective. Um, so I work in the product department, um, building tools and, and features for the community. Um, and I think for us in product, I think we in the community are pretty aligned big picture. We want our products and tools to be um, as easy to use and feature rich and um, inviting as possible. But I think then the sort of gap arrives because there's just simply too much for us to do. Like there are so many different um, platforms and tools and skins and projects um, and ultimately only so many product teams. Um, and so although we might both want um, all, those, all those features to be as good as possible, um, there's only so many things that we can do in, in a given year. Um, and so I think the foundation is, is constantly trying to find what is the most impactful project we can do, what is the... Um, most requested project we can do, um, but ultimately we're going to we're going to miss things. There's going to be um, projects that simply aren't don't quite make the cut um, given the limited number of things we can do. So that was sort of top of mind for me um, is that sort of constant prioritization that we're doing um, and how that may or may not line up with you know one one community group to the next. Hi, so um, I'm also from the product and tech department, like Sam. <clears throat> so besides the thing that he's already said, um, I primarily work with uh, language support, um, among other things, but that's a, a pretty uh, front and center part of um, my uh, work. And when you're talking about languages, you're actually connecting them directly to individual communities of various sizes. So the moment you are having that perspective of the people who form a certain language community, you see how small or big or connected, well-connected, ill-connected, far away they are from the entire movement's um, core in a way and how they are connecting to different parts of it. And that could be like the technical part of it, that could be like the awareness part of it, there could be like other opportunities, um, talking with each other. So I think the gap that I see um, and that I try to like constantly focus um, 
on, on the levels of the areas that we are working on is to make things as equitable as we can in terms of participation because um, the doors have to be kind of like more open for people to come through and uh, be part of the movement, do what they need to do. Not, not necessarily everybody has to do the same thing, but if they are doing something, it has to be satisfactory and as easy as possible, uh, not just from the product and tech part of it, but also from the other opportunities. So yeah, I work mainly with communities around fundraising and it's a topic which can be quite heated in the movement. Many people are not particularly interested in it. Some people are very interested in it. And uh, one of the things I encounter a lot as I try to reach different communities. So on the one hand, the English Wikipedia is our biggest fundraising campaign in December. We reach the English Wikipedia community. What are the forums where we reach the right people to have discussions with? On the other hand, there's the international campaigns, which are the non-English campaigns from Japan to Brazil, Mexico, it Italy, spreading across the globe. And we also try to reach communities on those wikis, having the same conversation, talking to people about collaboration on fundraising messaging in order to also I don't want to educate or kind of make people understand the importance of fundraising, why we fundraise the way we do, how we include community feedback and how important it is to bring our community on board, but ultimately also why we need to raise funds in order to fund our movement, in order to have Wikimania and other things. So finding places of having meaningful conversations with volunteers in different communities is one of the things that I keep working on. <laughs> So I work for uh, the partnerships in Southeast Asia around four years now, and I can see that uh, there is a thing that we that I personally believe very beneficial to improve the you know connection with the communities, which is interaction. Direct interactions is very essential. I'm coming from the academic backgrounds and. We love to generalize everything, right? We love to generalize, like make similar things here and there and here and there. But believe it or not, uh, according to my experience in Southeast Asia regions, each communities are different. Their difference is how they perceive themselves as a community, the priorities of the Wikimedia projects that they have. Sometimes they're less focused on Wikipedia, but other uh, Wikimedia sister project. And again, the cultural aspect is also important. So as the foundations itself, we need to be aware of it and understand from this cultural point of view. It's always a bit weird to have this conversation from the foundation perspective because we are the minority in this. So it's, this is more to present our view than to explain the problem in itself because we're just a tiny corner. But what are the different ways in which the communities and the Wikimedia Foundation understand decisions and prioritizations and how things come to be? Because quite often we end up where there are in communities one understanding or many understandings but one dominating understanding which is different from the understanding in the Wikimedia Foundation and how does that happen? Yeah so on, on the product side of things I think something that I see quite often is um, there's a kind of group of users maybe it's a, a whole Wikimedia project maybe it's just a, a subset of that project um, they have a product or tool that they need uh, worked on that, that doesn't fulfill some of their needs at the moment. Um, and obviously for them, that's the most important thing in the world, right? That's the tool they use every day. It doesn't work for some reason, doesn't have a feature they need. Um, and so the, to them, it seems very obvious that that thing should just be fixed, right? I just need this button being added or, or I just need something that seems fairly simple. Um, and I was a, a, a volunteer before I joined the foundation. Um, absolutely participated in those kinds of discussions where I said like, surely it's easy just to add this one button, right? Like it's, it's only a small thing and it would be very impactful for me. Um, but then I think at the foundation we're seeing that issue, you know, 200 times, 300 times, all of these little groups that say, I just need my one thing fixed. Um, and so it's, it's um, I think sometimes then it's just a, a process of us trying to figure out, okay, how can we possibly have the most impact, which is the one that is going to affect the most number of users or um, be the biggest difference from where something is now to where, where it could be. 
um, and then trying to go back and communicate and justify that to all of those other groups that had their thing that they really needed work done um, can, can be a real challenge. Um, one good example of that is the there's a project we're working on at the moment on my team to um, improve some software on English Wikipedia for the patrollers, um, for the new page patrollers. Um, that's a project that we hadn't worked on for many years because ultimately it's a, a piece of software only used by a few dozen editors. Um, and so it, it was quite hard to prioritize that, you know, that we were always comparing it to, well, we could work on this thing that is for all administrators or all patrollers or all active editors. Um, but for them, that's a critical process, right? It's a thing that doesn't work. And so I'm glad that we're finally spending some time on it, but um, it's going to be hard in the long run to say that we should work on that rather than some other big project. Um, so that's something I've been thinking about and trying to figure out how can we strike the right balance between those small projects and the maybe big projects. I think um, I would have said the same thing as Sam would, Sam has. Uh, so I'll pass it to Yulia or Shakti for a different perspective. Um, sure. So from the fundraising, it's also very much of like, we need to fundraise. It's how our movement is funded. How do we communicate that in a way that people understand, but also see how the money we raise is used, how they have access to it. So the kind of whole lifespan of the fundraising from the banners, which is on someone's home wiki and disrupts readers and might bring people into spaces with complaints where you don't want them. So that's why we try to do the fundraising campaigns as short and efficient as possible to interrupt the projects the least but like then also explaining why it is necessary and how the whole lifespan of the funding works in the movement is something to kind of work on to also, yeah, understand the need of the fundraising. Well, um, from the partnerships perspective itself, again, uh, when we're engaged with partners, impact is really essential. We need to create uh, you know, impact that able to cover, you know, more regions and also benefit it to the community itself. So the key is communications in here. We need to find the middle ground, whether uh, this kind of collaboration should be beneficial for them as well. So uh, when we have a good communications with them, explaining to them and become a good listener, I think it will, you know, create a consensus and also mutual understanding between the foundation and the uh, volunteers. So, sticking a little bit to the question, what do we need to do better at the foundation around the specific things you just mentioned? Because we talked about our perspective but it's not like there's this one perspective and people just need to understand it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's a, a huge topic. I'm not gonna have the answer, um, but but for sure some of the things that I'm, I'm thinking about is this question of how can we make sure everyone feels heard even if we're not going to prioritize the thing that they're particularly interested in? Um, what can we do to support them or how can we integrate their view into the thing we are gonna do? Um, and, and also like maybe, I think something we've been trying to do for a long time is is not only listen to the loud voices in the movement. You know, it's very easy for someone to, to dominate a conversation um, on English Wikipedia. I love the uh, the, you know, the bludgeoning policy that, that, or guideline that it's very easy to take over a discussion just by saying a lot. Um, and so I think we've we've tried to steer clear of not only listening to loud voices, but I also think sometimes we need to consider that maybe they're being loud for a reason. Maybe that's something we should be paying attention to, um, and trying to balance kind of the very broad consultation with also the sort of quite specific um, listening and, and um, engagement that, that we need to do to make sure that we're really prioritizing the, the right work that, that solves as many problems as possible. Yeah, I want to build up on what Sam just said as well as Sakti, because um, so um, I work from India, which is like way far away from San Francisco. So I have a perspective for the local regions around me as well. So um, while English Wikipedia is a pretty big presence in my country, the communities over there are much uh, like not associated primarily with the English Wikipedia. They're associated with their local dictionaries, wiki sources, with their local language Wikipedias, or for uh, you know local activities and stuff like that. So um, when we are trying to um, 
understand what exactly we need to connect on, we probably have to look a bit deeper into uh, like what exactly is the need for that group of people. Is it a natural alignment for them to come to the more prominent platforms like, you know, on Fabricator where we have our issue tracking system or on top pages of different Wikipedias or are the local gathering spaces more, um, uh, you know, more friendly or less intimidating for people to come and make a, like, you know, natural connection points with the foundation folks who want to, like, you know, mutually understand each other's perspective, understand how they are building priorities, what exactly are the challenges they are both facing while they are trying to move in in the same direction of, like, you know, movement growth. So there could be those little um, spots of interactions that we can uh, customize around our, uh, around ourselves and see if we can maybe utilize them, scale them up in other directions, and then um, also like find them, uh, find how they connect into the more conventional interaction spaces. Yeah, I want to build briefly on what you said, because I think the whole listening to people is absolutely crucial from a fundraising perspective. Yes, we need to fundraise, but we need to tell people or explain to people why we fundraise the way we do fundraise and also give people the space to collaborate with us on this. So it's not just a one way conversation, but the listening and hearing people's input is really important. Like for this year's English campaign, for example, we have an extensive collaboration page, which is on Wiki where people can already input now, like five months before the campaign. So having this listening and collaboration aspect to it hopefully it helps us to all move forward together and making it the whole communication, but also the whole aspects around it better. We just had meeting, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes ago, right? With uh, one of communities in Asia. And we are aware that I think um, cultural sensitivity, it's also important. I agree with me, Sam. Yes, cultural sensitivity. Uh, this is something that might quite difficult to explore one by one because culture is various across countries. However, even though it takes time, it's worth it to build a good uh, understanding and see how our volunteers across cultures mindset, how they perceive something, how they think, even though it takes time, but it's worth it. We have talked a bit about um, how one can try to bridge the gap. Why is there a gap? How has the gap formed from the very beginning? That's a really terrifying question. Um, I have I have one, I have one specific thought though um, on this, which. Uh, is that software development is really hard from a product perspective. Um, it's especially hard in MediaWiki, um, more so than in, in other contexts. Um, you know, I mentioned this like, this sort of thing of when I was a volunteer, I thought I could just sort of ask for a button that did a thing, and surely that's pretty easy. Um, it turns out MediaWiki is really hard to develop in, um, and projects take a lot more time than you, you think they're going to, um, just purely from the technical side of things, um, ignoring obviously all the design iterations and trying to make sure you're building the right thing. Um, MediaWiki is a really complicated ecosystem, um, and so, you know, when I joined the foundation, I, I would sort of, um, uh, and we start working on, on sort of product um, solutions, I'd be sort of assuming that things would, would work way quicker than they did, you know, um, I get an estimate for an engineer and someone told me that, yeah, you probably need to like at least triple that estimate, and I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> that's very surprising to me, um, and so it's a lot harder to like just fix something than it, than it seems. Um, it's especially hard to kind of jump around and fix a bunch of different things um, that different communities want you to work on. So um, it's a huge topic. That's not the whole the whole answer, but I think that's one thing that sort of contributes to this. Is that um, you know when you look at something like the wish list survey that I don't know if Marina wants to, to add anything to that, but uh, it's really hard to jump around to, to all of these disparate um, places in the, in the MediaWiki ecosystem and, and, and just make small changes. Um. I think about the wish list, I think you, your first point covered it also. I'll not repeat on that. But uh, to your specific question about how this may have formed, um, 
the specifics of what may have contributed to how things are right now or what, what they were and where we have gone, uh, those could be like, you know, very specific and you may get a different answer when you ask different people. But on the general side of things, like when you have uh, projects starting at a certain scale, a small scale, even the Wikimedia movement started much, much smaller than what it is right now. And when you keep growing, there is, of course, like, you know, the challenges of scaling up. When you have more people in the in this in the setting, little groups form here and there. Trusted groups form. People are not talking to each other or trying to build their own little um, you know interest areas. And if the connection points are not built out very well as 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 it grows, and I'm not saying that we did a bad job of anything. It's it's the general tendency of any uh, any project growing uh, to a bigger scale. Things like this will happen. Things like these gaps are inevitable. They will happen. It's just identifying them and making sure we are addressing them much sooner. And it's possible that we did address a lot of these um, gaps earlier, and we are do or we are doing them as we see they are uh, like you know as we see them getting like you know easier to handle, or uh, if they are like you know causing a big big fire of some sort, and we suddenly have to like okay no we can't uh, like you know not pay attention to this anymore. So and and when I say we, I don't mean the foundation. I mean everybody in the movement because everyone's like probably struggling with their own issues related to how like their little affiliates have grown from like ten years ago to now, or their user groups have grown from before to now, and and all of that. So um, possibly that's just challenges of us growing from like a hundred percent um, wikimania to i don't know it's a 1500 percent wikimania this time and that's how it is and i'm glad that we are talking about it because this is how things will slowly fall into places we'll identify wh where are the challenges how do we address them how do we keep talking about them how do we surface them and onwards from there yeah, I don't have much to add to that. That was very good. I think it also with the area I work in, I mean, fundraising, everyone has an opinion. We're all humans and we all like to voice our opinion. So it's finding that kind of safe space where we can all constructively talk together in order to bridge the gap that everyone's opinion has probably brought about. Yeah, well, it's uh, going to be a long effort, but let's do it slowly but sure, right? <laughs> slowly but sure. Does it help with people who are active in both groups? And in that case, how? And with both groups, I mean, I mean as community members and Wikimedia staff, Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, I, uh, given that I'm both active on English Wikipedia and also a uh, member of staff of the foundation, I, I find that I spend a lot of my day actually either communicating with one of those groups, right? Either either speaking to um, to volunteers, uh, to, to community members, to editors um, about a thing that's going on at the foundation, um, trying to kind of um, add as much useful information as I can, um, you know, not, not trying to be an inside mole or anything, but, you know, try and, like, explain perspectives or, or um, elaborate on, like, how things are working or why something is being prioritized, um, and vice versa. Um, you know, the Wikimedia movement is a very complicated place, um, and, and quite regularly at the foundation, um, you know, someone needs to work on a project and they know nothing about it yet. Um, and so I, along with plenty of other wonderful people at the foundation that, that are also community members. Um, I do spend a fair amount of my time then kind of uh, trying to explain or give perspectives on um, some community initiative, some tool, some some user group, um, and, and try to bridge, bridge that gap um, and, and make sure that that perspective is being heard. Um, so yeah, that's actually genuinely a fair amount of my time is, is kind of those sorts of discussions on, on both sides. It's funny that we are creatures of habit and talking the same sequence. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, um, so I did not join the Wikimedia movement as a volunteer, although my entire career has been in various kinds of open source projects. But um, so I did not have the community perspective when I became a staff in the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, but over the over the years, um, I think uh, the like I have I don't consider myself outside the community at all. I mean, it's just a 
identity that we've built for ourselves, how we are. Um, being in both places, I, like I said, I can't really make that distinction where I am just wearing this hat or that hat. It's a blended hat for me. But I, I think it's interesting to uh, like have a better peek into how the communities are changing. That gives a lot of um, insights into how the communication might need to be uh, like you know changed uh, in structure. Like for instance, if you're talking with people who have been in the movement since the last 15, 20 years, that's kind of like a different profile of volunteers um, who have a different connection, a different historical legacy with the project, how they showed up 20 years ago, how they are connecting now. Maybe they're using just one kind of device for all the work that they do on the on the Wikimedia platforms. Whereas compared to like compare, uh, some of the newer volunteers or um, recent uh, entrants, you'll see the perspectives being very different and their connections being different. Um, they are, they are, their ambitions being very different. So it does help to understand what exactly is the weather outside the offices of the foundation, if you may, and uh, see how the movement is like the dynamics of the movement changing and uh, like building up, up uh, on that and uh, figuring out how to like, you know, um, uh, build the perspectives, talk amongst ourselves and say, okay, if you're coming from this area or this demographic group uh, or this region, like what, what to expect? What, what, expect uh, what do you expect if you are having a conversation with the communities over there? We are approaching the end of this yeah. panel. Um, so if either of you have something to, to add to this topic, that's uh, fine. No, I mean, like you, I um, don't come from the movement as such, so yeah. I don't get Do we have any comments or questions from the audience in this last two minutes? All right, then I, I could add my own. I, I've been it's a very good at not interrupting them so far. Um, I'm, I'm one of those who have joined almost 20 years ago, which Runa talked about. Um, and I think both on the community side and on the foundation side, it's sometimes easy to forget that if you have full, you want full control. So if you're working on software, you want to control your software. You, you think that, all oh, right, I'm, I was hired for this. I know what to do. This is my area of expertise. And then you're someone who's editing and you're like, but I, I'm the one who uses these tools all the time. I need to control this. I'm the one who understands this. And the, in a sufficiently big circumstance, so to speak, you will always lack control. And that is incredibly frightening. And that is going to be frightening on all sides. And that is very difficult to solve. And that is one of the things we need to patch all the time. And it's just not fixable. It's just human nature. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, panel. Thank you, audience.